Dear friends, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to see the invisible light. This is the year of light, but here we are to see the invisible part of it. As you know, our institute, Bangalore Association for Science Education, is involved in science popularization as well as non-formal education. As part of the educational activity, we came up with this idea when we learned that there is a conference going on at RRI that just concluded. And here we have people who have been working in radio astronomy and they are here to tell us the exciting things that built up this branch of uh, astronomy which is a relatively young branch of astronomy. Many of you saw the radio telescope outside and here we have uh, Raghunathan who knows the in and out of it. So he is the best person to tell you how it works. In other words, he is going to provide us with the spectacles to see the invisible part of it. That sets a very good beginning to understand the sky through this special spectacle, namely the radio telescope, Mr. Raghunath. My name is uh, Raghu and I work in the Raman Research Institute as an engineer. I thank uh, Director Jawaharlal Nehru Planetarium Director uh, for giving me an opportunity to share my knowledge with uh, younger students. So my topic today will be on the radio receivers for conducting the observation of the sky. So this is the basic uh, uh, minimum required for any person who wants to pursue the field of astronomy, particularly radio astronomy. So within the time given to me, I will try to introduce you to the radio astronomy field, particularly engineering if you are interested, followed by the scientific aspect of it. So I will be merging both of them at, at to make you appreciate how interdisciplinary the radio astronomy field is. So the outline my talk is the following. I will spend some time on telling you the importance of astronomy in today's context. I, it follows the advantages of observing the sky in radio compared to any other wavelength, particularly visible. I will go on giving you a brief description of a radio receiver. What do we learn by observing the sky using the radio receiver? Then I will finally conclude by summarizing the importance of taking up or studying the radio astronomy field and the implications of it in all other contexts. Astronomy is a, as the definition goes is a field of science dealing with the study of celestial objects like stars, galaxies, planets and moreover the contents and the composition of the universe. If you ask why is it important, it allows us to have a deeper understanding of the nature of the universe apart from the earth in which we are living, carry out investigation on, on many aspects which are observed and for which proper, proper explanations are not present at the moment and more importantly in the field of physics observation put many laws of physics to test. It is a laboratory to test many laws of physics. You can ask by doing this what do we get? How are we benefited by conducting radio astronomy, studying radio astronomy? First of all the science, basic science gets enriched the understanding gets better and better every day as you move on as you do intensive research your understanding level goes high that is basic minimum basic thing that is expected out of it that comes out of conducting the research doing radio astronomy as a spin off 
it results in the emergence of several technical innovations. What I mean is radio astronomy if you want to do observationally you have to build instruments of your own. While doing that you are, you are not limited by the instruments that you have at present. What you have in the laboratory may not be enough for you to do a research what you want to do. You have to build your own instrument meeting the required specification for doing for conducting research in radio astronomy. So, in the process what comes out is the new aspects of engineering, new innovations of engineering which find usefulness in other fields. For example, communication engineering, medical engineering, GPS navigation, cell phone technology like this it keeps going on and all these effects, all these spin offs are useful in other fields as well. So, you be, even though you do not see immediate effect of doing conducting uh, research in radio astronomy these are all spin offs which leave its imprint permanently in other fields. It has made contributions to the nation's economy by helping industries to grow. This is very important because whenever you are trying to build radio astronomy build radio astronomical instrument at a larger scale for example, you may be aware that in the international side right now there is an attempt to build radio telescope over 1 kilometer by 1 kilometer area. It is a massive radio telescope which is being built for conducting research. So, when you are doing when you are doing that kind of experiment you need to have industrial support. So, through that you are making the industry grow. Okay. You are improving, you are helping the nation's economy in that aspect. So, these are all some of the important aspects of conducting research in radio astronomy. So, if you want to do research, if you want to observe this sky, what are the methods? As we know, visible light has been there all along, that is the one which began with using an optical telescope. Does it do everything that you want it to do? Answer is no, because it has its own limitations. Because any object coming in the way obscures you the image, obscures you the object at the back. So, this prevents you to go to far off distances in the universe. If you want to see anything beyond what you are able to see through your eyes, it is difficult you will not know what is there behind that is the limitation of it. So, what will you do to overcome this? The only way or one of the possible ways is to go to another wavelength. I, I assume that you have some science background in my talk and some physics knowledge. These are the only two things I, which I assume and I try to make you understand if you have that. So, you must be aware of the electromagnetic spectrum in which sig signal can have frequencies all the way from 10 to the power of minus 12 to 10 to the power of 4 in terms of wavelength. So, it is not restricted to only a narrow part of the electromagnetic spectrum which is to which our eyes are sensitive, but signal exists throughout the electromagnetic spectrum. So, therefore, if you want not to observe in the visible you are allowed to observe in other wavelengths as well. So, the advantage of observing at other wavelengths is you can go much deeper into the sky. The objects <coughs> which were obscured earlier become visible to you. You can get a deeper view of the universe that is the primary advantage of using radio waves which are invisible to you, but through proper instruments you can detect those waves. But main disadvantage of observing far off distances in the universe is signal becomes very very weak. 
that is the only one of the main disadvantages of observing a distant universe. So, how do we overcome that? All right. So, I will give you an analogy. Suppose you want to hear someone speaking at a distant, what will you do? You try to increase your sensitivity of ear in that direction. You see that you give maximum concentration of your ears in that direction from where sound is coming. So, you try to maximize your sensitivity of hearing in that direction. That is an attempt to listen to a sound coming from far off distance. So, what will you do in radio? In radio, we do exactly similar. We, there is what is called an antenna or a dish antenna as shown here. And what is shown here is its sensitivity in a particular direction. So, radio, radio telescope or antenna is an element which senses the radio waves. Like our ears which are sensitive to audio waves, radio telescope is sensitive to radio waves. So, the radio telescope as you see here has a very narrow beam. It is able to see the signal coming from a far off distance. It is not limited by the sound wave or the visible light. So, what is um, this is an analogy to our ear being sensitive making more sensitive to only one direction. So, this shows its sensitivity in a given direction. So, you point the antenna towards a direction from where radio waves are coming. So, that is the basic minimum that you are supposed to do like you point your ears to the direction of the sound. Then another aspect is suppose you have you have a very weak sound and uh, you have lot of people making noise. So, what do you do? Immediate thing that you would do is to make them calm down, make them make less noise. So, that you hear noise, you hear sound produced by a particular person or some sound, some machine. So, in the analogy what you do is the, the sound additional unwanted noise produced by the people is analogous to the thermal noise produced by the electronic instruments, electronic uh, gadgets. So, like you try to minimize the noise to hear weak sound, you try to minimize the thermal noise produced by the amplifying devices to catch the weak signal. So, this is an analogy I am trying to give you and, trying, and I want you to appreciate how it goes, how it is in parallel with what we normally come out with. So, like in last slide, I had an antenna which was directed towards the direction of some radio waves. Here, I show the antenna output which is the signal caught by it is amplified by an amplifier. Amplifier, I understand that everyone is aware of is a device which will try to increase the magnitude of the signal at its input linearly. Okay. It, if you give some voltage, some millivolts, it produces similar shape voltage at the output with an increased magnitude. It does not do anything to the signal, it only magnifies the signal. So, here is an amplifying a device which amplifies the radio waves obtained or intercepted by the radio telescope. So, here what we do is to, to reduce the ambient temperature of the amplifier. So, what should be appreciated here is any thermal noise produced by the device is highly temperature dependent. If you take a, for example, a resistor which is maintained at say 300 K and if you ask me what is the noise produced by it, I will say the noise produced by it is proportional to its ambient temperature. If you try to minimize its ambient temperature, the noise produced by the resistor drops down. So, in that way if I want to reduce the noise produced by the amplifier, 
I have to reduce the ambient temperature of it. How can I do it? You know very well in our household we have a refrigerator which in which the ambient temperature is brought down by some cooling gas. In a similar way what we do here, we put the dip, dip the amplifier into a liquid nitrogen which is at 77k temperature. So this is about 200 or slightly more than 200k uh, below the ambient 0 degree centigrade. So, by doing this, I am trying to reduce the ambient temperature of the amplifier and the thermal noise produced by this. So, when I do this, the sensitivity improves because the noise produced by it is, is lowered. So, then what I will do is I have, I have an antenna which has collected the radio signal and I have an amplifier which has magnified the strength of the signal. Now, what I will do? I will have to detect it. I will have to measure it. How will I do it? In, in, in optics, you know there is a CCD camera okay, uh, to capture the optical image. You have photosensitive films which are sensitive to light radiation which produces an equivalent voltage output. In a similar way, in, in the radio, we have what you call a detector, a, a called square law detector. What does this do is to produce a measurable quantity called voltage proportional to the power incident on the antenna. So, if the incident power is more, it produces a larger voltage and this can be measured using a normal voltmeter which you are all familiar with. So, basically a, a typical radio receiver is this. You have a sensing element which is an antenna and you have an amplifying device which is called low noise amplifier and you have a detector to measure the quantity. These three basic units form a simple radio receiver. Okay? If you understand this, then any modification of it goes very simply. Modification in terms of antenna, modification in terms of detection varies according to the technology, but the functionality of each one of them remains the same. So, now having understood basic functionality of radio I will try to introduce you to many aspects for which this can be used. If you want to observe this sun, okay, what you will do is point the entire receiver towards the sun here. Sun as we understand emits radio waves at all frequencies and to detect what you will do, you make sure that the antenna, the sensitivity of the antenna is maximum in this direction. So, when you, when you point towards the sun here, the signal produced by the antenna produced by the sun gets received by the antenna and you will see a deflection here. Once you go away, you will not see the contribution from sun. So, as you see here, this is the plot of the output of the voltmeter as you scan across the sun. That means, if you are on the sun, you will have maximum signal here. If you go away, the signal drops down. So, this, this is an indication of the signals produced by the sun. And of course, this is what is going to be demonstrated just outside this hall. And you will see that when we have a similar telescope, when you go across the sun, you will see signal going up and coming down. This is an indirect way of seeing the signal because the signals are not visible to you. Then you can ask one of the one more one more application is what is there in between galaxies? You see stars, you see galaxies, you see all sorts of objects. What is there in between? You can ask question. So, if you want to ask question, you will have to observe. What will you observe? If you observe, you will get something. What will you understand from that? So, all these things hinge back to the laboratory. 
they all our understanding of what we observe stem start from our laboratory uh, knowledge in the laboratory for example if you know different elements when excited to different temperatures what are the lines produced by them what are the ma what are the lines and what are the frequencies at which these lines are produced so if you have that knowledge what you see here is the many lines produced at different frequencies one may be because of iron one may be because of magnesium and another one may be because of hydrogen so different elements when excited to different temperature will give out radiation at different frequencies so this is the knowledge that you have got from doing experiment in the, in the laboratory so you apply this when you are doing sky observation when you are doing sky observation when you are looking the dish towards the sky like this and if there is some hot gas or something and if you get a spectrum like this at well well defined frequencies then you relate this with this in the laboratory you had seen that look this line is produced when magnesium is excited this line is produced when iron is excited this line is produced when hydrogen is excited when you have that information if you see similar signature in the sky spectrum you will know that that kind of material that kind of uh, uh, elements must be present this is an indirect way of knowing the composition of the universe then i will introduce you to the third one which which talks about the neutral hydrogen and its characteristics so we understand that uh, the dominant element in the universe is neutral hydrogen what is shown here is the uh, a ground state of the neutral hydrogen with the two meta stable states corresponding to two spin levels out of four quantum numbers spin is one of them you must be aware of spin can take two values plus half and minus half when when say plus half and minus half the energy levels corresponding to them are slightly different as shown here so in the, these are the two paths of the electron moving around the nucleus in this path electron has got direction spinning up electron here is going down in direction the spin the spin direction is lower so the energy difference between the two exists whenever electron goes from spin up to spin down there is a change of energy there is a change of its energy this change of energy appears in the form of a line that line is found to be at 21 cm so whenever you see a 21 cm line from the universe you can assume that there is hydrogen there okay so this is a very important aspect that you should know in rest of the talks which are going to be there today so 21 cm line is an equivalent way of saying that the frequency is 4420 megahertz of the signal produced by the neutral hydrogen so here it is 1420 same thing written in terms of 21 cm in wavelength so if you happen to see if you have neutral hydrogen in this space then you expect neutral hydrogen because of the heating effect to produce 21 cm emission lines so when does when does heating take place how does heating plague take place one of the methods possible is by heating by the newly born stars radiation intense radiation produced by the newly born stars and galaxies have their influence by heating the neutral hydrogen when neutral hydrogen gets excited gets heated you will have emission of 21 cm line so you will so this process can bring out radiation at 21 cm line now keep it in mind for the moment i will take you back in time at which the universe was very hot 
right now you know it is several billion years old. Now, if you go back in time when the new new universe had its origin, which is represented here as a, a as, as a spot with a very high temperature, at some point of the time after its birth, because of its temperature, thermal radiations were produced. I, I, I do not know whether you are able to see these red lines. So, you, you make your uh, ear or eye very sensitive to see these lines being produced here. These are thermal radiation produced by the universe, by the early part of the universe. So, we refer these thermal radiations in radio astronomy as cosmic microwave background radiation. So, there was an intense research in the detection of cosmic microwave background radiation temperature about a decade back and quantifying and measuring its exact value. So, which is 2.73 k is the value which, which observations have come out with. So, you have these emission of thermal waves coming from the early part of the universe. In addition, in addition, you have the additional 21 centimeter line coming out from the cloud because of heating effect. So, one is the default emission of thermal radiation which is come from which is coming from the early part of the universe and second component is whenever there is a newly formed star it heats the intergalactic medium and that heating process emits 21 centimeter line. So, now you have two radiations in the sky. Now, what will it do? What will it do? This 20, this additional photons, additional uh, radiation tries to distort the thermal waves here. So, thermal waves as you understand, as you have studied has Planckian spectrum the spectral characteristics of any thermal radiation is Planckian. I suppose you are all aware of it. Okay? So, when, when there is a when there is an additional radiation sitting on top of this thermal radiation, you have distorted the Planckian distribution. You have distorted the thermal spectrum of the uh, original waves. So, there is the distortion here. Why, how did the distortion come out with? The distortion came out because of the first stars which were formed here. So, this is an important aspect which you should bear in mind in this in this slide. So, the, what is shown here is an evolution of the universe. That means, universe began here and here where we are. This is the timeline and it starts here 0 universe and, uh, and you, are, you are here right now. So, during some period of its evolution, stars were formed, galaxies were formed, not in the very beginning, it had its own time to begin to form universe, to form stars and galaxies. During that period, intense radiations were produced at 21 centimeter line and because of that, as we saw earlier in earlier slides, distortions, distortion is expected. So, the distortion in the cosmic microwave background radiation is, is an important aspect today. The current research is in detecting the spectral distortion of CMBR radiation. So, when you go for sorry, when you go for detecting this distortion, you will get the knowledge of when did the star formation take place how did it form, what is the evolution of the universe. All these information start flowing one by one when you are able to detect these distortions. So, determination what I mean is epoch of realization what it means is this is the time period in the evolutionary universe during which hydrogen was or newly new stars were formed. and distortion of cosmic micro background radiation occurred. So, all our efforts in the present context of cosmological experiment is to detect when did this happen. 
I want you to appreciate that this is a, a very hard research topic at present. Many experiments are being conducted to know to detect the distortion in the signal which will tell you all the structural evolution of the universe. So, determination of the epoch of reinization is the current most hot topic in which research is going on. So, that is all main, main aspects of my talk. What I have done is I have tried to introduce to the field of fluid astronomy giving salient advantages of pursuing this. Then I have given you a glimpse is not an exhaustive introduction of radio receivers, but I have given a, a glimpse of radio receiver for observation along with an analogy which make you understand the functionality of the receiver system. Then I have touched upon the advantages or our scientific understanding how does it grow, how much, how much we enrich our knowledge about the universe using this observation. So, if you have any questions, anything may be, if possible, I will try to answer. Otherwise, there are experts here who will answer them. Thank you.